Good afternoon. Welcome to our show. I'm your host, Melissa Ridge, and we're doing things a little bit differently today. As you can see, we are not in the studio right now. We are uh, live from my kitchen counter, uh, and we're glad that you could join us. Uh, I'm not in the studio today. I'm at home awaiting COVID test results, so that's why uh, we're doing things like this. So yesterday was uh, World Inventors Day, and uh, we are going to put our own inventors and innovators in focus for you today, celebrating uh, their entrepreneurial, innovative spirit. Uh, we could start back by saying you know, some of the things that we use today uh, were invented by our ancestors. Some things are common, like uh, kayaks, obviously, um, lacrosse, corn, but there's some things that maybe you didn't know, such as sunglasses, uh, rubber, suspension bridges, uh, syringes and hypodermic needles, which I thought was interesting as well, baby bottles, birth control, oral contraceptives, uh, and painkillers. So it shouldn't be surprising to any of us that that entrepreneurial inventive spirit does continue today uh, with our people. We're going to introduce you to some of them uh, today, and I cannot wait to do so. But first, we're going to take a little bit of a tour. Uh, imagine that you have an idea for a new product of some sort. Uh, and you have to make it reality, but where do you even kind of begin? Like who helps you get that, turn that seed into a uh, you know, budding little plant, right? So North Forge in Winnipeg is one of the places that helps uh, innovators develop their products, right? Uh, how it works is you buy a membership. It gives you access to equipment that uh, you would need to make your product. Uh, they hook you up in a co-working space with uh, experts to develop a customer base. Uh, your marketing strategy, uh, mentors, even you name it. It's kind of a one-stop shop that they are there to help uh, those that spirit kind of flourish. Uh, Kristen Kowalik and Marnie Stapley uh, took us on a tour of their fabrication lab here in Winnipeg last week. Uh, it's known as the Fab Lab uh, to explain how it works and they and how they support inventors and innovators. Very cool uh, to see like three million dollars worth of equipment there to be used by people who obviously don't have time or space or money to go in and have their own fabrication labs uh, built to get their products off the ground. Um, I also want you to pay attention to uh, a regular in the Fab Lab. That's Robo McRobo face. You'll see him kind of go zooming back and forth uh, across the screen as we're taking a tour, uh, say you're working with somebody who's in a different city or somewhere else in the world altogether on this product, you want to show them where you're at in the development stage, how things are going. They're not going to fly all the way here to see it, but Robo McRoboface can beam them in uh, so you can see what you're working on. Let's take a look at North Forge Fab Lab. So the fabrication lab, or fab lab as we love to call it around here, um, is, is open to entrepreneurs who, who have a great idea uh, but are not sure how to build out that prototype and don't necessarily have the you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars it takes to, to access the equipment that, it need, that they need to build that prototype or to build frequent iterations of that pr prototype that many need to do in order to get the right version of that prototype to take to market and to sell. So what we provide here is an opportunity to make those changes, to pivot frequently, to, uh, to use all different types of equipment. We have more than $3 million worth of equipment at our facility here, and we're open 24 hours a day. All you need is a simple membership with the fabrication lab. We provide the safety training. And then there are all types of makers within this space who are willing to share their expertise. They, they work together so beautifully here. The community here is, is really what makes this place special. Yes, you're building prototypes. Yes, you're making businesses. But you're doing it in such a collaborative environment that the feeling you get here is is what makes this magical. It truly is. And you guys are expect. I mean, it's, this is great for if you're living inside the perimeter mm -hmm. in Winnipeg. Lovely, but not everybody lives in the capital of Manitoba. But you guys right. are looking to expand. Uh, to northern remote communities. We, we are, Melissa, you're right. So we're in the process of uh, developing a fabrication lab up north, working with uh, Thompson and the Paw. So you met uh, Robo McRobo face rolling around earlier. He may make an appearance I here still he's again. Still <laughs> I just saw him go by. Yes, and, and so uh, we're working to build a, a program up in the north. So uh, having a physical space where, with similar uh, types of equipment that we have here that we know uh, are well used and uh, can make those prototypes uh, and, and make 
access to to building uh, building a business, um, and and then ma Pat, uh, pardon me, and then matched with our Four Stage Founders program to uh, learn the skills to actually develop out a program uh, to develop out your business. It, it really just makes the idea of, of building a business so much less scary, and, and it's just having that, that help along the way where you don't have to be in, you know, building in a silo. It's, uh, it's, it's just that, that helping hand to, build you along the, uh, to help your business along the way and, and contribute to your success. So while we were there, we had the opportunity to chat with somebody, uh, Grayson, well, as you see him now, he makes specialty knives, very cool specialty knives right there at the Fab Lab. CNC room, do you wanna, can you quickly say what you're doing in there? Yeah, so right now I'm cutting out uh, knife handles. So I run them on CNC router, so I'll lay out a block of wood, uh, lay out my file digitally, and then it, uh, enables me to carve out the handles uh, and they'll be extremely precise and efficient so it'll be both sides will be completely uh, uh, mirror images of each other instead of encouraging to do it by hand you're hand sanding it you're polishing it it might not come out perfectly even so being able to do it on the router they come out uh, perfect So this next uh, business we want to introduce you to, it's a tech uh, business, it's an app that was developed by Indigenous uh, man and his business partner, Jeffrey Wrightberger, is traveling. He cannot join us today, but his partner uh, certainly can. Uh, Burns, is, uh, Burns Benoit is here now to talk about their new company called I A Company. Burns, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell us how you and Jeffrey came up with the concept for I A Company. Well, we were uh, commiserating on how um, how it was to deal with elderly parents and their their medical appointments. Uh, my mother was uh, in her mid eighties and required uh, that uh, she had to be at the doctor every second week for testing and uh, uh, to f get follow up on things. And uh, my uh, my sister and I essentially uh, looked after that. Uh, getting her to and from the doctor's appointments. But what we found was mom would go in and we still wouldn't have any information about the, about the, uh, what transpired in the appointment. Um, so we were still sort of in the dark about how her care was progressing and things like that. Uh, Jeff was in a similar situation um, a couple of years after my mother had been through all of that and uh, with his mother-in-law. And what he was noticing was it was taking a, uh, an extreme toll on his partner um, and her sister who spotted off uh, getting her mom to the appointments and um, the appointments were taking longer and longer and they were whoever did the appointment was losing a half a day of of uh, of their lives um, and still not getting much in the way of of um, So looking at the whole package, we mm -hmm. decided we would develop uh, an app and technology uh, to match um, uh, families, both the, the elderly patient and their adult children uh, with uh, a professional nurse. The nurse would uh, pick up the, the, uh, the patient, uh, take them to the doctor's appointment, and sit in on the appointment and take notes and pose any questions that the family may have. After the appointment, the, the nurse would accompany the patient to, um, to any uh, post-appointment activities like tests and, and uh, changes in pharmaceuticals and things like that and see them safely home. We would then, uh, the nurse would then uh, provide a written report that would be peer reviewed by our um, relationship manager and uh, this report would be posted on a secure link. You'd be provided with a secure link so you could see exactly what was going on in the appointment and also get uh, answers to any questions you may have had about the, about the appointment. 
I love that. I mean, certainly with an aging population, our elders, uh, and especially, you know, remote communities, not everybody is connected with family members who can run, um, you know, their, their elderly loved ones to these appointments and keep track of all this. How many, like, what do you have in terms of staff and in terms of clientele right now? Like, what's been the uptake of this? We're at uh, proof of concept testing right now. We've had uh, a number of visits and, um, and had a great deal of success with those visits. Um, the uh, nursing professionals, other than our right. uh, relationship manager, are, uh, are independent contractors. And uh, the appeal here is that um, um, many nursing positions are um, part-time and this uh, allows uh, for, a, for a nurse to take on additional work with IA company to suit their schedule and also uh, gives them the chance to uh, get a little more involved with um, person-to-person -person nursing, getting to know the patient, getting to spend time with the patient. So it's a very fulfilling for a nurse to get, uh, to get involved with IA company and provide these visits. Uh, Absolutely. And is this uh, regionally specific? Is this only in Manitoba or is this across Canada? Our plan uh, currently is, is to, um, is to um, develop the Winnipeg market at this point. Uh, obviously, there's a great deal of appeal for um, adult children who don't live in the same city as their parents. So in other words, the, the, the children may be yeah. off in Vancouver or Calgary and mom and dad are here and still need to get to the doctor and, and the, the kids are still interested in, on, in how things are progressing with their health care. So there's a, there's a good attraction for that type of individual. Right. So we're marketing beyond the Winnipeg market at this point. And we've also um, found a very receptive mm -hmm. audience in the States and we're, we're, we've incorporated there we've uh, developed all of the the profiles and the apps for the u.s market as well and will likely open in the eastern seaboard uh, in the new year well we are so glad that you could come on our show and tell our audience and, and focus all about this first so that when we when i a company is just you know a household word that we all know and we all use we can say well yeah we heard about it here first well, that's right. Um, you uh, you could also mention we do have a number of proof of concepts uh, slots available. So, and this would be free of charge to individuals um, who would like to uh, sort of test drive the service, if you want to call it that. And um, they can contact out, our yeah. business. They can How contact they our business development person, Jackson Sharon, at two zero four two nine one four seven seven nine, and we could set that up and. Uh, and uh, and give them a trial run of the of the service. Love this, Burns. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome, Melissa. Thank you. Well, so as we said at the beginning of the show, our ancestors invented a whole bunch of things that we still use today, uh, from sunglasses to rubber to painkillers. Uh, that innovative spirit certainly lives on, as you're going to see today with the guests that we have uh, on here for you. Our next one is Jordan Smith. He joins us from Toronto. He's now uh, the brains behind this app called uh, Rentery. And it's an app that connects people to those who have recreational equipment that's just sitting around that they're not using, you can make some money off of it. So if you're visiting somewhere and you want to go on a bike ride, you can use this app to connect with somebody who can loan you a bike uh, while you're there. Uh, Jordan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I let when I have to say when uh, when I heard about this app, I thought, well, and I guess that's the the thing about the best inventions. When you hear about them, you're like, well, why didn't I think of that? That just seems so logical. Uh, can you walk us through a little bit about you know how you came up with the idea and then how you got it up and got it started? Yeah, for sure. I guess uh, long story short is like being your typical adventurous millennial. Found myself on a trip to Vancouver, really wanting to kayak randomly. Uh, but that being said, the process to do that wasn't as easy as I thought it should be. Uh, it was full of multiple steps, to be honest, a whole bunch of phone calling, uh, figuring out that a lot of the rentals didn't really meet even my price range. Um, so that being short, or long story uh, short, uh, really wanted to create a platform that solved my issue that I had in particular and also maybe other individuals. 
individuals. Uh, so similar to Airbnb, uh, we created Rentry, like you said, where individuals can list, discover, and rent out uh, everyday items. Um, you know, everything from uh, your, your kayak, like you mentioned, a camera, a specific cabin, or even like the extra space in your house. Um, but that's really where it, it kind of came from, just a, a personal problem. Hello. Now, have you always felt like you had like this kind of innovative entrepreneurial spirit in you? Were you doing something before and this just hit you? Um, yeah, so my, my, I guess since the very beginning, um, I've ever, I've, I've, I've always had a love for like entrepreneurship, creating things, really figuring out like the process of how to do it. Um, didn't matter if it was like a kid, like selling like crab apples from like backyard on the driveway. Um, or even like in university, uh, starting uh, like a random t-shirt company. Um, I guess uh, I guess the lead or interest in uh, specifically tech, we'll say, uh, really stemmed from my past life of working at Skip the Dishes. Um, that was a pretty random story on its own. Uh, basically came across the founder who um, was really telling me what he was doing uh, in Winnipeg and for the prairies. And then that's, that's kind of where it really stemmed from there. Yeah, well, I skipped the dishes. Look at, I mean, it's just, it's a household today. It's in all of our lives now, right? So we see, and I was just talking to our previous guest for iCompany, iCompany, you know, it's funny how these things, uh, somebody thinks of them up, somebody makes them happen, and then it just becomes just a regular part of our life, and we don't ever remember life before we had that. I mean, is that the, the direction that you see Retory going? I mean, it's certainly, if it's so similar to Airbnb in that uh uh, you know, I kind of think that you were expecting big things to come from this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that is kind of our bigger plan is to expand nationally. Uh, so currently right now we have early access to our application on the Google Play Store and Apple App Store uh, that will allow individuals to actually upload particular items as of today if they wanted to and really start that rental community um, throughout Canada, regardless if you're in Bercy, Saskatchewan, that's where my grandma's initially from, uh, or even like Toronto. Um, so that, that's kind of the bigger plan is to really kind of expand this rental community um, from coast to coast. And, you know, so is there anybody you want to give a shout out to here today to say, like, who was there at the beginning, helped you get this going, advice to people who are sitting on a, their own little seed of an idea right now? Yeah, I, I guess uh, what I would really say is, um, for me personally, uh, my inspiration actually didn't come from your, your I guess, your tr or traditional entrepreneur. It was actually my mother and my grandmother. Um, they didn't even have actually traditional education, to be honest, but actually seeing them working day out um, and just have that particular work ethic, um, there isn't actually anyone I would particularly put in a higher pedestal than those three individuals uh, on this entrepreneurship journey. Um, and I guess in regards to a tip, um, I, it, that's a tough one. I, I guess what I would specifically say is if the one thing that's really preventing you from jumping or taking that leap into entrepreneurship is, is fear, um, I guess the one thing I'd say is just really take that leap and be scared because at the end of the day, what you're really doing is completely different than what you probably ever expected to do. Uh, probably what the world has ever expected to see. Um, and that's a big enough win on its own to me. Um, so that's kind of my uh, couple of advices for that. Well, we love that. Jordan, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And we look forward to watching uh, Rancheria just bloom and blossom and explode. And we're glad that we heard about it here first on APTN in Focus. So I want to go now to, do you remember back when we were all, maybe I'm dating myself a little bit here, but uh, going back to uh, high school, we had shop classes and we had home ec class and you'd build a birdhouse and that's kind of the best you could really hope for. Well, things have gone far more high tech for this generation, let me tell you. Uh, helping them to be inventors and innovators, there's a program uh, that we got to go and uh, meet the teacher and the students at uh, the Innovation Center Entrepreneurship here in Winnipeg. Uh, it's called the MICE program, actually. We caught up with Scott Angus and a couple of the students. Here's what they had to say about this program that is helping young students get their brains around being inventors and innovators. We have two schools uh, that uh, contribute students to this program, and they are high school age, but essentially the program is 
they walk through uh, all the steps of starting a business. And so that's everything from how to come up with a good idea, all the way to you know who are you trying to maybe sell to, and then trying to at the end of the year launch uh, launch your business. So this is, uh, I mean, it's not your regular business. Obviously, you could do that in a regular old classroom, yeah. but this is not uh, a regular old classroom, right? So yeah. what type of business uh, are they thinking about getting into that you need to be in an environment like this? Yeah, well, the great thing is like no matter what kind of idea you have like this is the program for you especially you know a young person trying to do something it's amazing to have it here at North Forge uh, Fabrication Lab though because there are so many amazing tools and resources and uh, people that can help you build an actual physical product so this place specializes in building physical prototypes uh, of differing types of materials and that sort of thing and so if you are looking to create something out of wood and sell it, you can definitely do it here. But we have students working on kind of technology solutions and app solutions and um, maybe like fundraisers and events and stuff like that. So it, it, it doesn't matter what kind of idea you bring, but uh, it's super cool to have it here with all these cool toys. Is there kind of a new focus on invention and innovation starting at a young younger age than previously? Yeah, well, I think I think people are starting to realize the value of experiential learning and, and learning while doing. And I know these students have an amazing setup at their school where they do this regularly. And so this is just another opportunity for them to be able to um, be put in real life scenarios to try stuff and to learn stuff and uh, as a way of schooling, uh, which I think something uh, <laughs> that something was kind of missing, especially I know when I was younger. So uh, it's, it's, it's awesome to see that these opportunities exist now. But I think, you know, they, there could be more. There could be, there can always be more because I think this is a really valuable way of, of learning and growing and, um, and kind of finding out what you want to do. How long has this program been going on? Quite a few years, probably it's in its fifth year. I've been doing this, this is my second full year doing it. And uh, yeah, I love it, it's, it's tremendous. Has there been any students that have kind of just blown your mind with like ideas? To totally, yeah. it's, I feel like there's new ideas coming every week in terms of just a thought here, a thought there, or they were looking into something. And Give us an example. So, uh, well, I'll give you a couple examples from last year and a couple examples from this year. So, we had a student that actually started a drop shipping business. So, drop shipping, essentially ordering raw materials um, and being able to provide it to customers without having to hold inventory. So, kind of a newer uh, model of of running a business. And he, this you know particular student, while in grade twelve, was earning quite a bit of money through this business and I mean COVID he, he was at home a lot and was able to kind of facilitate this and so it was kind of advantageous to be able to have this time to work on you know his particular business and this year we have a lot of students focused on I mean we have people wanting to do physical products like uh, Ch Chas will be able to talk maybe specifically about his idea but really excited. A lot of things related to um, kind of gear. And so we have Kira who wants to do kind of custom nails and nail application. We have uh, people wanting to make specific apps or tech solutions that are, you know, maybe a little bit more technological minded. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, it doesn't really matter. And we got a couple students wanting to create a, uh, a site that collects opportunities and experiences in uh, STEM fields for young women and girls. So kind of a, like all over the map in terms of yeah. ideas. Yeah. What do you love most about your job and teaching this program? Probably, probably that, like seeing kind of the, the passion and inspiration when, um, when the right idea kind of clicks. Yeah. And I think that's like a common misconception is entrepreneurs or people who start businesses have like those light bulb moments of you know an idea comes out of nowhere yeah. but i think this process re, uh, helps students realize that it's those moments come after learning a little bit more researching a little bit more trying stuff failing failing a little bit yeah. having a little bit of success and then you know when you see that kind of click and that passion really uh lock in that that's like the moment where y you know you don't, you're not concerned about 
um, them coming up with something because they're already off, like they're excited to go and run with it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the moment that really makes it worth it for sure. We got to meet three of the students who are currently enrolled in that MICE program uh, with Scott Angus. Uh, these are future innovators, inventors. They're working on their, their concepts now in high school. Imagine having that much of a, a leg up, hey? Uh, here's what they had to say. Uh, I'm very interested in like a really niche scene called the mechanical, like custom mechanical keyboard scene. And with that, it's a lot of custom things you need to do by yourself or with like a lot of machines and actually coming here is like the perfect thing for me so is it because they have a laser cutter and i'm able to use that to make cases and stuff it's really nice what type of cases uh keyboard cases so like you put your keyboard inside of the case and then it like looks really nice and it makes like a bunch of different sounds and you can do a bunch of different things with it and do you have a prototype that you could show us? Uh, I don't have a prototype physically yet, but I will soon. I just need to get the program ready so I can actually like start cutting it out and then putting it together. I love it. Uh, Ali, why did you take this course? What are you, what are you working on here? Um, I'm interested in the fashion industry, so I am going to make sustainable clothing that is also attainable for kids like me. Why did you want to take this program, and what do what you see something as uh, in your future? Well, um, I'm interested in nail tech, and I've always had like a passion for nails. And coming here, I thought I could make my own business doing it because, yeah, I love doing nails. Being out in the public doesn't really satisfy me, so it would just be me, like one on one, with doing nails. Like so, and I, nails. Yeah, like a salon. We need to take a break, but when we come back, we've got more inventors and innovators to introduce you to, so stay with us. Tiny little seed germinating, that's what we work with all the time. Um, definitely, if you have an idea, we run an open house every Tuesday from 6 till 7.30 p.m., and we welcome you to come down to our facility and take a tour. It takes roughly about an hour. We'll show you around. Uh, we'll introduce you to some of the makers who are here working on their prototypes or, or their, uh, their product, and, and you'll see and you'll feel the community environment, I assure you, right when you get here. And you'll see all the different types of equipment that are here uh, and, and learn about uh, what is possible within this space. Join our conversation now. Call in toll-free at 1-877-647-2786. Like us on Facebook on our APTN News page. Follow or tweet us at APTN in Focus. And send your thoughts to infocus at APTN.ca. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for joining me today, not at the APTN studio, but rather from my kitchen. I'm at home awaiting a COVID test results, so we're just going to do the show from here today. We are talking about innovators and uh, inventors here today on In Focus. Joining me now is the CEO of Northforge, uh, Joelle Foster. She uh, is going to help us get our head around how you could take an idea and make it uh, a reality. Joelle, thank you. And we're thankful that you can join Hi, Melissa. Today. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Hey. I'm sorry that you're at home. So, <laughs> thank you for having me. I'm sorry that you're at home. Oh, I know, I know. And everything's a little more difficult when you're not, uh, you know, around all the equipment and technology that we're used to. So now we're just kind of winging it and making, you know, putting things together with duct tape basically to make it all work. But we're here and we're glad that you could join us too. And we're so thankful that you guys opened up your doors to us, take us on a tour. Uh, what an incredible facility. I have to know, how did you get into this sort of business? Well, I've been in the entrepreneurial ecosystem probably for, I guess, about 16 years. I used to oversee Futurepreneur here in the prairie. So I've started over 450 businesses so a lot of the ones that you know like uh, shawarma con and skip the dishes and Kalia flowers and some of those ones we gave their initial seed funding to this is going to be just incredibly uh, fulfilling for you to be working with some of these people who have just this idea and then to bring them to fruition and then to the to the point where they become just part of our everyday lives right yeah, they, I, I have affectionately earned the nickname Startup Mom 
and you know and that's because I I love doing this this is what gets me out of bed in the morning is helping somebody else's dreams come true I mean I really have one of the best jobs yeah no doubt uh, so tell us a little bit about um, you know what would you if you're in a remote uh, community you're up north you're, you don't have the benefit of having all of these services and like a fab lab like we have here in Winnipeg um, what advice would you have for some people who are maybe watching at home, they're up north, they're remote, uh, and they have an idea, where, where do they even go to, to get that off the ground uh, when you don't have all of those little bells and whistles that we take for granted kind of in the cities? Well, you know, I, I came into uh, my role as CEO of North Forge in February of last year, right when COVID was hitting. I was in a, for a week, and that's when everything shut down. So I had already determined that we were going to redo our whole program. So we built it so that it was online, so it was digital, so that it could reach anybody, at, like in every corner of the province, all over Canada, actually, if we wanted. And it's a four-stage program where the first two mm -hmm. stages, called Pathfinder and uh, Basecamp, are free of charge. So if you have an idea, you can sign up on our website, and you can validate your idea through uh, master classes and uh, online uh, modules. So it doesn't matter where you are, as long as you have a computer and you know relatively good internet access, mm -hmm. you can take our you can take our classes, and then we can help you validate and determine if your business model is going to work before you put thousands of dollars of uh, you know, money in there and time, and then if you have to pivot, we help you with that. But yeah. up north in Thompson, right now, we're actually opening up a fabrication lab. So we should be having the grand opening. I'm thinking maybe Krista January, had and then we're, yes, and then we're going to focus next on the Paw, where I was born, where my family actually grew up, and uh, we're hoping to open one there. And then we'd love to do it all over the province, if if possible. Yeah. Well, you know, we are so thankful that you uh, kind of opened our eyes to all this uh, innovation that was happening right here under our noses. I certainly know it was news to me. And uh, we love that you um, are set up so that it's not just people who live here and within the perimeter of Winnipeg, people remote uh, can get involved with it and take their ideas and kind of hatch them your little, in your little hatchery that is North Forge with full of uh, experts to help them along the way. So thank you, Joelle, for joining us today. We really appreciate this. And uh, good luck with, I can't wait to see what the next big thing is to, to come out of there. Well, we'll keep you in the loop, Melissa, when we have other companies uh, that, so are we have that are coming to fruition. Awesome. We're here for that. We love to champion the, the success stories out there, that's for sure. Uh, we've got another innovator joining us now, but I'm going to have to hand things off to my beloved colleague, Daryl Stranger, who is at APTN headquarters today. He is in studio right now. Uh, so we're gonna go back to Daryl. Yeah, thanks, Melissa. So uh, I'm here in studio with Ivy Chatelain. I hope I'm saying that right. I know I was trying to work hard on that all day, but uh, she's in the process of an invention and joins us to talk about the support she's had uh, and found and uh, has an idea and wanted to make it come to life. So Ivy, tell us ab about yourself and how you became an inventor. Um, well, hi, I'm Ivy. I am 25 years old. I'm Métis. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. And I would say I've always viewed the world differently. Um, I do have a bit of a learning disability, so my brain has always been different and I think because of that it allows me to see the world in a different way and uh, so I could see things like everyday life common problems and I my brain auto automatically goes to well a solution what do we do how do we make it better mm -hmm. um, how do we make this available right so I don't want to tip, tip your hand too much as you're still working on it so we'll keep yeah. things really simple here <laughs> so you had an idea for a product um, what was your first step in developing that product and where did you go for support to make that happen? So my very, very, very first step I have to say was my mom. I went to her. She has always been the one to tell me 
no. <laughs> so when I went to my mom and I told her about this idea, she was actually like very, very supportive with it and saying, oh, that's a really, really smart idea. And she actually uh, gave me the phone number of Robert, my mentor from Equal Opportunities West, EDP Winnipeg. Um, and so from there on, I just made calls, set up appointments, and then from um, EDP, I got into North Forge, pounding down every single door for every person that would listen to me mm. and hear my idea, but also sign like an NDA. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Um, so yeah, and I did uh, Seed Winnipeg. I really want to mm. uh, shout them out because they are the ones who kind of gave me my first stepping stone to get my business certificate for completion. So right. not only am I not having to spend years going to university to, and get mm. significantly in debt during yeah. a pandemic, yeah, no um, but I can do all the learning virtually from my home um, and work out of my, my basement. And uh, yeah, I have a, a lot of mentors and uh, imagine it, uh, mm. Rod uh, Giesbrecht is the founder and CEO and they uh, partnered with Microsoft in 2007. So he's also mentoring and helping me out with this product that I can't talk about. It's so hard. I want to so badly. <laughs> You're doing a great job of like explaining the, the process, which is why you know we wanted to bring you on and just how the process worked. So how long has the process been and where are you at in bringing it to market? Okay, so this initial process started for me, I guess, the moment of the inspiration. So we'll say September of last year. Um, and then we had to do, you know, get registered, get incorporated, um, all of those, those fun legalities. Mm -hmm. uh, the process honestly has been a dream. It's honestly been a dream. It's, I, we are so close, like we are this close <laughs> to releasing this and coming out with this product and I would love to be able to come back and uh, give you guys the inside scoop. Oh, but we would love to have the inside scoop, don't, don't <laughs> you worry. Yeah, um, so I would say basically it's been about a year of nonstop like hard work, dedication going on, I would say two years, but we should be coming to market by March 2022. March 2022, all right. My we'll birthday keep that, month. <laughs> oh, perfect, we'll keep that date in mind. So what words of advice would you have for other Indigenous people who might be watching at home and have an idea for something and they need, you know, just a starting point to make that happen? My advice would be, honestly, it starts with you. It's, it starts with believing in yourself. It, you, if you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe in your product or you don't think that you can actually have the ability to do it, you're in your own way. You need to be your biggest advocate and that's something that I've learned in life, especially having disabilities, that I have to work with my brain and not fight against it to fit in a society that wants us all to, you know, blend mm -hmm. in and be normal. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you can do it. You can do whatever you set your mind to. And there are people out there that are really willing and able to, and want to help, and they want you to succeed, honestly. and. Uh, I would just, I'm just honored to be here today, honestly. Mm -hmm. So who are the people that might inspire you? Who are some of your f favorite people? They don't necessarily have to be inventors, but you know, who, who do you look up to? That's, that's a good question. Um, All about the hard hitting questions. <laughs> I have always admired my mom. She raised me as a single parent by herself. Like I, I love my dad. Hi dad. He's, he's uh, American. So I don't know. If he'll <laughs> see this. I'll send you the link. Um, but my mom for me was always the person that I felt that I don't want to say responsibility, but my goal is to take care of her and family and financial. And just so she never has to have a want or need or anything in life. She's been through so much sacrifice and, um, I just, I, I guess I would look up to, I guess, like Elon Musk. I don't want to, that's very political because of, you know, but my mentors are always calling me Elon Musk now because they're like, you're going to be the next Elon Musk. I'm like, stop, don't, 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 like, don't, you know, mm. but uh, I guess my mom, I love her so much. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the perfect answer. That's a great way to end uh, your segment here. So I want to thank you again, Ivy, for joining us and sharing a little bit of your story without revealing them too, too, too much. So thank you again, Ivy. Thank you guys so much. And check out Vandits. It's going to be coming out. I was cast in that, so I had to. <laughs> perfect. 
All right, well, thank you, Ivy, for joining us. And we're also thankful for North Forge for opening their doors uh, for this show and connecting us with some of the inventors and innovators who shared with us today. Now, there are many other companies and organizations out there helping people get their ideas, products, businesses up off the ground or helping to market new companies, uh, concepts, and products. So a few of them are uh, Inventor Canada, Mako Design and Invent, the Canada Foundation for Innovation, and Idea Pros. So get to the Google to see who is best to help you develop your invention, who is in your area. Be sure to do uh, your research and check the testimonials from inventors and innovators to see who they would or wouldn't recommend for help. You can look up fabrication labs in your area too. There's a lot of them across the country for you to connect with and make your dream a reality. All right, we need to take another short break, but when we come back, we are switching gears from inventors and innovators to sports. It's 2021, and there are still people doing the tomahawk chop. We'll be discussing that. And we talked to Ojibwe artist Patrick Hunter about the mask he designed for NHL goalie Mark andre Fleury. Stay tuned. Welcome back to APTN In Focus. Let's go to social media now with our social media editor, Jesse Andrushko. Jesse, social media is buzzing about the Tomahawk Chop again here in 2021. Now, I thought that was deemed as offensive as the old Cleveland baseball team logo or the Washington football club's old name and, and put out to the pastor too. Uh, apparently, that's not the case. What's going on there? Yeah, you're right, Daryl. It looks like that's not the case. The Tomahawk Chop tradition persists. Since the early 90s, fans of the Atlanta Braves have been using that gesture to celebrate great plays and wins. Here's a clip from the National League Championship Series in Game 2 against the Dodgers. The Atlanta Braves won the World Series last week and there was a lot of talk on Twitter for, for and against the Tomahawk Chop. Derek said, Atlanta Braves, celebrate your win by retiring the Tomahawk Chop. Mensa tweeted, not one person doing the Tomahawk Chop at the Braves game is thinking, man, I hate them tribes, I'm a really get them by doing this mocking gesture. From Eric, yeah, I'm not going to the Braves parade, lose the Tomahawk on the jersey and the chopping chant and then we'll talk. We asked our followers online what they think of the gesture and whether the team and fans should stop using it. Car Carol said, Facebook's, Facebook, oh sorry, on Facebook said, personally, I don't know anyone that has a problem with it. Shondell responded, how many indigenous peoples did you pull for that decision? Because the one, because this one has huge issues with it. Sandy said, if people want to act like Indians, who cares? Me personally, I don't have a problem. Michael commented, it was never meant to be insulting ever and there's no need to take it that way except because of this insane cancel culture. On Twitter, Sharon said, it makes me so uncomfortable that I refuse to watch anything related. And a couple responses on the APT News Instagram page, Kathleen said, very racist and totally tone deaf these days. La lastly from Mr. Rose, taking away the logo and then using the tomahawk chop is like a slap in the face. Thank you to everyone that shared their thoughts. If you want to add your opinions, here's how. Join our conversation now. Call in toll free at 1-877-647-2786. Like us on Facebook on our APTN News page. Follow or tweet us at APTN In Focus. And send your thoughts to infocus at aptn.ca. All right, well, thanks for that, Jesse. Uh, from one sport to another now, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury, the new goalie for the Chicago Blackhawks, debuted a new goalie mask designed by Ojibwe artist Patrick Hunter. Patrick joins us now to talk about the mask. Patrick, first off, uh, the mask design and artwork, is, is it's beautiful. How did all of this come about? This year in 2020, they messaged me through Instagram of all places. And uh, initially they wanted some designs for their first ever uh, land acknowledgement that they play in their arena before every home game and then kind of 
called me again later in September and asked if uh, I would be interested in doing uh, the goalie mask for Marc-Andre Fleury. And the answer was yes. And that's kind of how it, it kind of really got started. So can you walk us through the design of the mask a little bit? What, what inspired this design? Uh, well, having done the, the artwork already for their land acknowledgement, I, I pulled a lot of that imagery from the land acknowledgement to the mask just to have some, you, you know, um, so there's more context. So, like, so they've seen the artwork for the land acknowledgement before. Now it's on the helmet. And I just tried to treat it as a uh, teaching moment so that those two things can tie together. And yeah, the, the seven feathers that are on the helmet represent the seven grandfather teachings and also uh, the florals on it. His last name just happens to be Flurry. And, you know, florals were something that were traded and put onto apparel that we had traded around the Great Lakes. So it was kind of a little piece of iconography that I think everyone can relate to. So what was your reaction when you saw it on the ice for the first time? Oh, like I'm still kind of coming down from that. Um, you know, my cheeks almost want to burst because they, they're, I can't stop smiling about it. But um, it, it was insane. Um, I'm still kind of getting a lot of love on social media about it. And, you know, what a great opportunity for the Blackhawks to kind of try and change the narrative around, the, you know, the, the logo to here's how we can kind of do reconciliation the right way. Mm -hmm. Now, our show today is all about inventors and entrepreneurs. So I, I want to switch gears just a, just a tiny bit here. Now, you recently sure. won the Entrepreneur Spirit Award at the Indigenous Entrepreneurship Awards. Uh, what did that mean to you to win that? Thanks for, for uh, bringing that up. I, um, with everything that's going on with the, the mask, I was like, oh, yeah, that happened. Um, you know, it just kind of should, goes to show me that you know, there's people watching and the work that I'm doing has impact. And, you know, when you're in the job every day, kind of working at the table behind me, um, you forget sometimes that, you know, a lot of people are watching and it's, it feels really good to know that um, there's folks out there that the work resonates with. So who's, who inspires you uh, in your life? Who kind of inspired you to, to take on the, the journey that you're currently on? Um, when you kind of become um, <clears throat> more known in, in Indigenous country, you kind of tend to meet everyone and, and kind of get to know everyone. But Jen from Chico, Cheekbone Beauty, she's a real inspiration. Um, she's a lot of fun. And my friend Kanye Dio Horn, um, the actress uh, from Mohawk Girls and also Letter Kenny. Uh, you know, a lot of women, I think, really inspire me to kind of keep going on. And my mother, of course, and I don't know. There, there's too many to name. So what advice do you have for other young artists and entrepreneurs looking to, to make their way in this world right now? Sure. I, you know, I made a mistake earlier on in my career, and I wasn't really real with who I was as a person. I'm a two-spirit Ojibwe man. That's what is infused in a lot of the work. And in the beginning, I, I kind of tried to hide that a lot. So I think if you really lean into who you are as a person and then to, um, you know, your culture, wherever you come from, your background, that can totally be an asset to your success. And that's something that um, I hope that I can get across to you guys today. So what's up next for you, Patrick? Is there any big projects that you're able to share with us that you're working on right now? Oh gosh, uh, nah, not that I'm really allowed to talk about, but you know, fingers crossed um, that we'll chat again soon. But I don't even know how you top, you know, doing a, a mask for Marc-Andre Fleury. So, um, I don't know yet. Hopefully I can take some time off and just chill and be with family. And going back to the mask one last time here, what's your favorite part of, of the mask and the whole design process? Uh, I mean, it doesn't necessarily look the way that a lot of hockey masks look. Um, I, I, this is my first one, so I really didn't kind of have a lot of, to go on there, but um, I hope that it was original enough that people would you know, love it. And that seems to be the case so far. Um, but yeah, I, I love the colors on it and the fact that, you know, it's worn on such a national stage and a beloved stage as, as, as the NHL is. Um, that means a lot to me. And should anybody want to reach out to you for maybe a design of their own or, or just to say hi, where can they do that? Call me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Patrick Hunter underscore art at, on Instagram is kind of the easiest place to do it. It's like the new business card these days or patrickhunter.ca. You can 
find what I'm up to on there. All right. Well, Patrick, I want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to speak with us. And again, that design is just incredible and it looks great on the thank ice. You. Everything about it is just uh, top notch. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the chat. It was awesome. All right, that's a wrap on our show today. Thanks again to North Forge for opening up their doors to us and the inventors and innovators who joined us to talk about turning ideas into realities. Hopefully it inspired some of you inventors out there. And thanks Patrick Hunter for sharing about the NHL mask he designed. And thanks to our crew and to all of you for tuning in. And I also want to give props to Melissa Ridgen for doing the show today from her kitchen. Despite having to isolate at home, it might have looked a bit different, but Melissa, you were just as great as you always are. We all hope you feel better and hope to see you back in this chair soon. Have a great afternoon and see you back here next week.